Hey guys, I'm back with some more Alpine content just because I really like it and I think it's extremely powerful. Uh, for those who are just tuning in completely new, completely from scratch, definitely go ahead and have a look at some of the other videos that I have which are getting started, building a drop down search, binding scroll, events, so on and so forth. In this video, we're going to be talking about a bunch of things and it's going to be really awesome. We're going to talk about effects, we're going to talk about ignore, we're going to talk about cloak, and we may talk about teleport. So those are the four things that we will talk about, but for those who don't know, anytime you want to, let's say, get started with Alpine, you have to define the X minus data. Otherwise, Alpine would not initialize and it would not recognize anything that's happening inside these blocks. So now that I've done that, I can go ahead and I can give set my name like this. So I can say my name is, I don't know, sorry, not like this. I can just go ahead and do this and say my name is Saad Mahmood and I can say my COVID status is negative. I hope so. <laughs> so we can do that and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add an, a div and then I'm going to say x minus text and I'm going to say the text is going to be my name and then similarly I'm going to have my COVID status here. So as you can see if I just go ahead and look at the page, refresh it. So it's saying that there is some issue here. Let's just see what the issue is. So I have the name which is Saad Behmood and then I have the sorry we don't need an is equals to here we basically need to have a colon so now it should be done so I have a Saad Mahmood and then I have my negative status now if I let's say go ahead and have a button that changes uh, the COVID status or something get COVID if there was a way to actually get COVID I can then say, if I let's say click on this button, I want my COVID status to turn to true. When you're actually changing a property, you need to go ahead and use the is equals to. When you're assigning it in the X minus data attribute, you need to do it using the colon. So if I say get COVID, it says true. I'm not even saying sure why it says true. It should say positive. So now that I have it positive, get COVID, I have it positive. And then also I can have another thing about like changing my name. But what I wanted to point out here specifically is we have an X minus effect uh, listener or a watcher. What it does is it watches any changes that are happening inside the X minus data uh, property or whatever you want to call it. And then, for example, if I change my COVID status, I can say COVID status or I can also just console.log and then COVID status. Now, as you can see, if I refresh it, it automatically, when it when Alpine initializes, it says your COVID status is negative. When I say get COVID, it says positive. So this is a great way of watching or listening to changes that are happening inside of your file. So anytime I now make a change in my COVID status or anything that I define here, it's obviously going to be reflected by the X minus effect property. And the same goes for the name. If I wanted to change my name, that obviously would be reflected here as well. So that's one really important thing about you don't have to specify which property you have to watch it can just watch everything um, and all the properties that are used or all the variables properties so on and so forth that are used within the program so that's one thing um, one other thing that i can go ahead and i can talk about is the x minus ignore thing so imagine you have this get covid thing and you wanted to say that i don't want alpine to look at this. I don't want this to work like for some weird reason. I'm not even sure why you would want to do that, but there can be instances where you want to do that. So I say get minus COVID and obviously it does nothing. And one reason for this might be, if we just go ahead and have a look at it, I can say that the X minus, X minus text attribute for this is going to be, sorry, I already have an X minus text. So if I already have this, I have my name. Let's just go ahead and actually enable the button again. So I have my name and it prints out and then the COVID status, it also prints out something. I can say X minus ignore here. Now, if I say X minus ignore, as you can see, the whole thing disappeared. And obviously the reason for that is that I'm saying I don't want this X, anything happening on this div. Uh, I don't want Alpine to listen to anything happening on this div and it doesn't listen to it. So there can be instances where this may be used. Um, I can't really think of anything at the top of my head. Apologies for that. 
but basically you can use ignore to ignore anything that that's happening inside a block even though alpine is initialized outside you can ignore it by saying x minus ignore so that's one thing uh, some other things that I can just talk about roughly are the, I guess the x minus cloak property. I can talk about the x minus cloak property. So, for the x minus cloak property, what one thing that really happens when you're actually working on Alpine, especially when you're working on mobile menus and stuff along those lines. So imagine I'm just going to create a div. I'm going to say this div is going to have a style. Let's just go ahead and give it a style. It's going to have a style of width. 500 pixel height 500 pixel and background is too black so now we have this box and since i have it zoomed in the box is really big so let's just go ahead and make it small so now that i have this box i can go ahead and let me just go ahead and actually move it below the button and add a comment here x minus cloak so and also let's just give it a margin top so we can see it margin minus top 50 pixels so here we have our whatever it is so one thing that we usually do with x minus show is so imagine we have a property saying modal is equals to modal colon uh, false so imagine we have a modal false and we say that we only want this particular thing to show when the modal uh, property on the alpine initializer is true so i can say x minus show when modal is true so i'm going to say x minus show and as you can see when i refresh the page sometimes this black box appears right and we don't want that jumpy thing if i've already hidden it why is this thing appearing and i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to add a button here just to show you how we can uh, change the modal property so we can just say modal true and that's just going to automatically enable the not automatically obviously you have to click it uh, show modal so now that i have this button i can say show modal and as you can see this modal is showing so that's how you go about and do that but the problem that x minus cloak solves is this flickering effect so how do you go about and do that well you can just say x minus cloak and that's it no obviously not <laughs> that's not it but once you have that property given, you can go into your CSS and you can say that x minus x minus cloak, and then you can give it a property. You can say display none, and you can give it an important. So once you do that, and then you refresh it, I'm just going to go ahead, and obviously nothing happens right now, maybe because we don't have our CSS included. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to include my CSS file. So I'm going to go ahead and link style sheet, and then say CSS slash styles.css. So now that we have our styles, as you can see, even though Alpine takes some time to hide the modal, it's already hidden by default because we've given it an X minus cloak property and hidden it. And this is basically not so different what you would consider doing with HTML or whatever. But the point is, if I, let's say, go to my X minus cloak, uh, this is the modal, right? If I, like, what what's basically happening here is you've given it a class or an ID or an identifier or property and what happens is uh, you've hidden it by CSS right that's what happens but the, the reason why you can't really do it with CSS or uh, just by giving it an ID or whatever is because this doesn't automatically get removed when you add a class or whatever but X minus cloak does so as you can see there is no X minus cloak on this so every time let's say Alpine initializes the X minus cloak nothing happens there but the CSS hides the X minus cloak and when Alpine initializes, it hides X minus cloak or it removes the X minus cloak property. So the display none that was previously applied on that particular thing is no longer there uh, with the CSS. So now if I, let's say, show the modal, obviously that's there. I can hide the modal. And if obviously if you want to hide the modal, you can just say uh, this and that's going to be a toggle. So show modal and then obviously you can toggle it. So that's one other thing that I wanted to point out. So now we can talk about the X minus teleport property. What the X minus teleport property does is it actually goes and places the particular thing that you're actually looking at in a different location. So imagine you're using a drop down, yet you don't want the drop down actually embedded within the HTML in like the UL element or the LI element. Or when you're doing modals and overlays, and you're working on, let's say, a very separate file, you're working on a file that's quite contained 
uh, within a particular component but you still want to say that I want to have the modal here because it's contextual to the file but what I want to do is anytime this modal opens I want it to go to the root component or to the body tag and just be appended at the end of it so if you want to do that you can just simply quite simply wrap that thing into a template uh, so template container and then go ahead and say I want to teleport this x minus teleport this to let's say the body tag and once you do that as you can see it's now being teleported it should be like let me just go ahead and see where it is so as you can see it's actually being teleported never mind this again extensions which are again being introduced maybe by some plugins and stuff but it actually is being teleported outside of this x minus data block even though it exists inside of this x minus data block and that's extremely powerful especially when you're working with components drop downs so on and so forth one other thing that you can do with again the teleport thing if you want to instead teleport the container or teleport that particular modal or anything whatever you want to teleport is if you want to teleport it let's say uh, on a particular class or an id or any other container you can basically just do that as well you can say modal container and as you can see it's now teleported to that particular modal container so it's not really that hard to actually teleport things to an id a modal container you can even probably teleport it to a reference but just and then just to give you an idea of how powerful this is uh, without necessarily changing where that particular element is placed in the dom if that's a restriction so that's going to be pretty much it for this video do subscribe to hit the bell icon do let me know if there's anything else you want me to cover in the alpine videos i'll definitely start making a bit more complex videos probably uh, in the next one but if there's anything that you've missed apart from in any of the videos that I've done or any basic things that you would like me to cover definitely let me know and I can do that but I'll see you in the next video take care bye